Facebook people, how are we today? Come on in and have a seat. You can sit anywhere you like. Got a great guy here, a Vegas comic, Byron Austin. He's over there in the other square. He was going to come on a while ago, but he pulled some muscle exercising, which is like hard for me to do because I don't do squat. So he's here to share his life and his passion of comedy with us today. And let me read his intro before we even let him talk. Let me, let me get right to that, you guys. It's a good morning in Vegas. You can see behind me, everybody's winning millions of dollars. See, they're just holding in their excitement right now. So here is the intro for the Byron Austin. There's only one of them, and that's him. <laughs> Intro, almost three years into comedy, Byron is making a name for himself with his wit and off-kilter off brand of comedy. If I could describe my comedy in two words, he says, it would be left hook. I love boxing terms, I get it. You don't see these punches coming, but when they land, you'll be knocked out of your seat. He shared stages with DJ Demers or Demers Las Vegas best local acts like Zach Miller and up and coming local LA comics too. He's been doing comedy three years, almost three years, two years, nine months or so. You get the point. He knows how to write comedy and deliver it with a left punch. So let's get to know this guy, hey. Byron Austin. Hey, woo! Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's going on? You got a blackboard, a whiteboard behind you. Yeah, okay. that's my million dollar ideas. We'll see what happens. Nice. Yeah. What What are some of your million dollar things you have in the works, Byron? So these are mostly, that's just uh, usually either a screenplay or a series that, you know, I'm trying to get a pilot, let them want to write a pilot about or write a movie treatment and see what happens and try to present that and get it sold and as many of them as I can get. So that's, that's kind of been my summer or pandemic, I guess. Whichever one you want to call it, they're both the same. They're the same. They're interchangeable here these days. Wow, you are, so you're quite the writer. Have you had yeah, any of your, say that again? Oh no, I said I love to write. That's that's kind of how I even got started even doing stand-up. I didn't plan on doing stand-up ever and somebody just presented it as a good way to get my thoughts out and yeah there we go and now i'm here so i have a lot of your screenplays and writings taken off already absolutely none of them uh no i'm pretty new at this so uh it's, it's just something i'm trying to get going i feel like i got some good ideas and as a person i'm working with and writing with and creating with uh we're just coming up with great ideas and firing them off and putting them together in a way that I feel will be universally appealing. And if nothing, I mean, they're not all comedies either. There's some drama, there's some, some dramedies. Um, some of them are looked at as, I don't know, it's just, they're just all over the place, honestly. It's just a, a bunch of ideas we've written down that we will one by one get through. Uh, hopefully this won't all still be going on because we got a lot to get through. But if it does, I won't be bored. Yes. Well, can I go back through the beginnings of your life? Because I'm always amazed at funny people, where they started. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Angleton, Texas. That's a small town, like 40 miles south of Houston. Uh, so yeah, I grew up there in a very loud country family. Uh, so that's uh, a lot of that is where I just got my comedy from and really where I started writing. I remember when I was like, I don't know, like eight or nine, uh, a couple of times this happened, I would write and my brothers would help. We would basically write these little like family plays, so to speak. And we would act them out in front of the family during Thanksgiving or Christmas. And every once in a while we do it at church too. Uh, 
And I just, I, I had a temper growing up. I was a really asshole kind of kid. And then when I got to middle school, something flipped and I just, I think it's because when I was going to high school, I was very small. I wasn't even five feet when I was a freshman. So I couldn't be an asshole anymore. So I had to, you know, figure out a way to not get bullied. And I just learned how to make people laugh. And everybody I grew up in the neighborhood with, we'd hang out at the lunch table, cracking jokes and snapping on people. And I think that's kind of how it developed. But um, yeah, and then again, my family played a big part in that. Me and my brothers, we're, we're a hoot anytime we get together, uh, if you want to call it that. But uh, that's kind of like our thing to do is to just talk shit about each other and other people. So you're from Texas and your last name is Austin. Is that your real name or is that your stage name from Texas? Oh, that is my real name. And I actually lived in Austin for like 16 years after that. Cause when I left home, I went to school, the small town next to Austin. And immediately after I finished, I moved right to Austin for a good little while. So Austin was home for very much. And I heard all the jokes you can hear. Oh, your name is Austin and you live in Austin. So yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of sad though. Cause my, uh, my license just expired and I'm I'm not going to be able to renew my Texas license, so I'm kind of I'm kind of sad about that. Yes, that's like a death in the family. I get it. It is. It is. So I guess I'm going to be a, a Las Vegan pretty soon. <laughs> I guess officially. Yes. So three years into comedy, what was the very first stage you got up on? Uh, it was an open mic at a place called Mr. Tramps. Uh, back in Austin, and this was this was around like eh, I want to say September. It's September ish, 2017. I'm not one of those people that I remember my comedy birthday. No clue. I remember it was this season. The weather was like this at this year. So end of summer 2017 is when I started. Um, it was kind of a challenge because uh, I had told a friend that I wanted to do it, and his uh, girlfriend was having like a backyard. Uh, poetry slam music party and I was like I want to do some stand up there just to bring a different element and he's like all right you're in and I I just said it like probably drinking I was bartending at the time so probably just drinking and talking off my ass and uh eventually like about two weeks closer he was like okay we're gonna do this I was like oh shit I got no material so uh one of the guys one of the guys who was a cook at the place I was bartending uh, who actually convinced me to even try stand up. Uh, we just kind of sat down and like wrote some things out like five or six minutes. I went to an open mic and it went great. And I did this little house show uh, a couple of days prior to my friend's event. And that went really, really well, like even better than I thought it would. Um, after I got done, uh, it was a comic who's a veteran. I don't know if you're familiar with him. His name is Johnny Azari. He's based out of New York. Uh, so uh, he was the headliner at that house show, but after that, he was like, yo, you you're pretty okay. You're, I can tell you knew it, how long you've been doing it. I was like, dude, this is my second time on stage ever. And he's like, oh shit, I thought you've been doing this, you know, for a couple years at least. Uh, so that was a big ego boost uh, to help me get back on stage at an open mic. You know, I did my friend's event and I went back to an open mic and again, the first two went okay. And then the next couple weeks were just shit, like, terrible uh, and then I realized like okay I have to learn how to write stand-up jokes it's different from just writing because I, I used to write uh, like a, I guess you would call a blog or an op-ed I don't, I don't know what the fuck you call it now uh, one of those but it was kind of humorous and people would say oh you should try stand-up and I was like nah I don't it's not my thing I just like to write um, and then the buddy I was telling about that I worked with he just said uh, to me one day, like after a random joke, he's like, yeah, you got good timing and delivery when you just fuck with people. I was like, oh, that's an interesting way to put it. So I tried it, eventually got better and better. Uh, I did like a show or two in Austin. Uh, I was only in Austin for like nine or 10 months doing stand up, but uh, my brother has been out in Vegas for like 10 or 11 years now. Uh, I wasn't doing much in Austin. Again, I was just bartending, hanging out. Um, so I decided I just wanted to be around my brother for a little while. I'd only lived in Texas my whole life, so I wanted to change the pace. 
And I've heard the Vegas comedy scene was a good place to learn your chops. So I figured if I'm gonna see if I'm any good, fuck it, make a, take a leap. And uh, I did, and I'm pretty good. Yes. And so tell me, have you, have you stayed with like local clubs and casinos or have you gone on the road or a mixture of both? What's happened in three years in Vegas? Well, two uh, years and some. Yeah, a little bit of both. Uh, I've done some local clubs, of course, uh, Dirty at 1230. I've done LA Comedy Club a few times, Hilarious 7. It's one of my favorite shows. Uh, and then, I don't, you know, the bar shows, as many as you can think of. Uh, so I've done that, um, done some shows on the road. Uh, I've done LA a few times. I just came out from Salt Lake City with uh, Tabloid, who uh, is the host of a podcast that I co-host. Uh, she's absolutely hilarious, one of the best comics in Vegas. Um, uh, let's see, I did a festival up in Portland in February. I was my first festival. Uh, I won some bringer show contest in LA. That was my first experience with a bringer show. Which one I'm did a, you do in Portland? Did you do hijinxes? Uh, yeah, the Northwest Black Comedy Festival. It was I, one. I, I volunteered with him year one, two, three, and four. Maybe not, okay. well, three years for <laughs> sure. Four, no. Yeah. Yeah, it was wonderful. It was a great turnout. Uh, Portland was a great city. I actually had, got to do at the comedy festival and then another show, uh, out there as well that I got booked on uh, with some some other pretty great comics. Uh, Shane uh, Brendan, I don't know if you're familiar with him. Oh, heck yes. Yeah, so I got to share a stage with him as well. Wow. Uh, so Portland showed a lot of love. I had fun out there. I would love to go back and fuck that city up some more. <laughs> Shane Brendan, yeah, he's uh, he's top shelf Portland comedy. Oh yeah, man, he's a good one. He's a good one. He, I think he walked away with the best uh, comic of the uh, of the festival. Wonderful. Yeah, that's my old club, Harvey's. Really? Yeah, I did uh, comedian interviews and training there. I just came there, came from there in December. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So I yeah. I know that Harvey's is a great place. It's a good stage. Yeah. I, I was. I only had one show at the festival and we also recorded a podcast, but I mostly hung out at the bar and smoked weed. <laughs> That's pretty much what I did in Portland and went through sneaker shops, thinking about all the sneakers I want to buy when I finally get my big break. Yes. Well, what are some of your goals in your life? You know, I know you've got the writing on the board there, the handwriting on your wall, so to speak, but you know, like what, what, when will you know that you've arrived as a writer and a comedian? Um, I don't know. I don't think I'll feel I'll have arrived until I can make a living doing it. Like until I can quit my day job and feel secure and comfortable knowing this is my life as a writer and a comic. That's that's when I know I've made it. Uh, so until then, I'm just practicing, working, training to take advantage of the opportunity when it comes. That's kind of the mindset and the goal at this point is, you know, I know I'm funny. I know I can make audiences laugh. I can make people laugh. That's not the problem. It's just when the opportunity comes, just be ready to knock it out of the park. And that's kind of the focus. Sounds like you're already doing that. You're knocked it out of the park for the Portland Black Comedy Festival. Great Got show. The Vegas did really well at that show. Good. So you, there was a lot of comedians from Portland, from Vegas that came to it? Well, uh, Tab actually hosted a Vegas, uh, I would, I guess, portion of the show. So, uh, so they have different, you know, they have different, uh, you know, sections of the of the festival. So, yeah, they actually had Vegas as its own showcase. So Wonderful. it was myself. Tab hosted. It was myself, Donnie Johnson. I'm sure you're familiar with hilarious, uh, Taurus Farley, who's actually based out of Utah, Salt Lake City now. And Sarissa Hall, who I forget where she's at now. She just moved from Vegas, but I can't remember where to. But us four, Tab hosting, Tab got best host uh, of the show, wow. uh, of the whole festival, uh, actually. Uh, and it was pretty nerve wracking because I was the first one up after her. And she did, she crushed it so much that whenever she said, Are you guys ready for your comic? the crowd was like, No, no, stay on. I was like, oh, fuck, I got to follow this. 
but I followed and how did it go following her how did you how did you transition the crowd to taking you on I am pissed off I did not record that show it's one of the best sets I've had wow. yeah that was one that's gonna be lost but it was a good one uh Darn. like from from the start to finish one of the best I've had that's amazing I'm so happy for you thanks great great yeah, Portland is a very weird town. I grew up there, and I love ripping on Portland when I do comedy in Portland. I love giving them a hard time. <laughs> I love it's hearing the speakers. City. What? It's a weird city. Oh, excuse me, but yes, it does it remind is. me of. Uh, it reminds me of Austin, I guess. Yeah. Uh, everybody told me that when I was in Austin, like, oh, Portland's. It's just like Austin, and I went there, and it's like, oh, I get it. But didn't some guy move from Austin to Portland who brought the whole keep Portland weird thing there? Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I was that's... messing with the city. I, I made some jokes on stage about them, of course. Good. So you say that your comedy is like unexpected left punches, left hooks. So, you know, like, when a, you know, like, I'm an older comic. I'm a newer, older comic. And a lot of times people tell me as a concern that my jokes don't take them really by surprise. They can see the punchline coming. I've worked really hard at right. trying to have surprise, but really to me, the surprise is, am I going to remember the punchline <laughs> by the time I get there? <laughs> I'm not trying to, you know, puff myself up in any way, but you know, like how, how is it that you're a young comic three years I've been in it six years. I still have trouble having surprise, and you, you figured it out in less than three years. So, like, that's the hardest thing for me. What? How does a comedian have a big, huge surprise punchline? I think that's the hardest part of comedy is mining the funny. Like, there's things that make you laugh, but I don't. The hardest part is finding out why it made you laugh, and like that's kind of what I try to get into when I'm writing jokes, when I'm just riffing and throwing stuff out is trying to find that. And then, I mean, sometimes it just comes and it's just pure gold and yes. it is what it is. But um, I think a lot of times, like I'll take, I'll take a lot of serious issues and make fun of them and not make fun of them necessarily, but I'll just try to spin, spin it in a way to where you have to laugh at yourself for taking something so seriously. I like guess, that. you know, uh, whether it's racism or sexism or, you know, homophobia, whatever. Like, if if you're on the wrong side of that, I'm going to fuck with you about it, but I'll try to spin it in a way that everybody's getting laughed at. I guess so I, I never punch down on people, I guess, is, uh, is one thing I try not to do uh, in my comedy. If I write a gay joke, I'm not going to try to punch down on gay people. I'm gonna make it funny as I'm gonna make you feel weird for feeling weird about gay people. Like that's kind of where I'm, what I want to come from. Uh, so I don't know if that helps explain it at all. But. It does, it really does. Thank you. Yeah. So a lot of times in order for me to have a surprise, it's kind of like the shocking thing the little old lady is thinking and saying and doing, you know, mm -hmm. that's my shtick, you know, that's, right. a, that's as surprising as I can get. <laughs> yeah. But I think a lot of times is a lot of times I feel like some comics, even super famous ones, like since I've started comedy, like I can just see a joke coming from a mile away during a setup. Uh, and then the ones who don't do it or the ones who you, you think you know where it's going and they just go off. Those are the great ones. Those are the ones I really love. Like, that's why I think Dave Chappelle is the best person to ever pick up a microphone because yes. he will talk about something absolutely serious and he will bring you in and draw you in and then he'll flip it and say the most ridiculous silly thing and you learn something but you're still crying laughing at the same time because it's it's just real and it's also funny okay well that's a good challenge for me i'll go watch I've watched him many times, but I'll go watch him from the vantage point of flipping the script and being unpredictable like that. Yeah, he's he's got that down pretty well. And again, I don't know what I'm talking about. I've been doing this for three years, so. <laughs> Tell me about your podcast that you're co-hosting. 
I want to hear uh, the premise and what has been going, how long. Yes, Tell me so all it's, about called, it. it's called Reticulously Funny. Uh, it's hosted by Tabloid. Uh, I mentioned a few times here already. Uh, and it's on streamed on Hot 702.5 FM. So if you go to their website, uh, I think ours is released every Monday at noon. So you probably have to scroll through because it's timestamp. But yeah, if you go to Hot 702.5 uh, FM.com, go to the playback section and they have the list of all the podcasts there. Uh, but the concept of the podcast is mostly we talk about current events for the most part. Uh, and uh, we'll bring in two guests usually, definitely a comedian, uh, hopefully two comedians, but if not a, another comedian, another artist in some form, whether you're a musician or a writer or a painter, or you work with artists, uh, but somebody on the creative front. Uh, but yeah, we just we shoot the shit. Uh, we talk about current events. We have an advice, uh, advice column section as well. Um, and then we do kind of just, uh, there's an after show part where we do talk more about the comedy game and uh, really just share different, you know, different tools and different, uh, different ideas or uh, just different gems that everybody can take away and put forth towards where you want to go in comedy. Uh, you know, she's been doing, uh, doing it for 12, 13 years. She's been on some really big stages and traveled all over the world and over the country. So uh, me getting the opportunity to sit down with her on a weekly basis, uh, for one, I get to learn a lot. I get to meet, you know, a lot of comics in the area or just artists uh, in, in the scene. Uh, and it's been great. And she's funny as hell. So it makes it not work. I have to tune in. I'm going to go and tune in and check it out. You should. We're going to do a, uh, we're going to do, we usually record on Wednesdays, but we're doing a, uh, we're doing it today, actually. So if you ever go to Tab's Facebook page, she is always doing it live on her Facebook and Instagram. So on her Facebook, it's Tabloid. Yeah. T-A-B-L-L-O-Y-D. L-L-O-Y-D? Yep. Wonderful. Ridiculously funny. Ridiculously funny. I'll, I'll send that spelling to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll spell it here for the people in case they're listening. It's R-I-T-I-C-K-E-L-O-U-S-L-Y. Perfect. Ridiculously funny. Yeah. That's us. What's that? I say that's us. That's you guys. You and Tabloid. Yeah, she's famous, I'll tell you. She's a good one. She's really good. Uh yeah, she's uh she took me out to Salt Lake with her uh not last weekend but the weekend before. Uh we were supposed to go to San Diego, I believe, this weekend, but nothing's happening. Um I believe we have another trip set up the end of August somewhere in Arizona. So hopefully that'll come through too. But yeah, she's been like she believes in me, so you know, that's anytime she takes me on the road, I'm gonna fuck the stage up. So <laughs> That's amazing. I'm so happy for you. That's thank you. At at this stage of the game to be hooked up with tabloid and traveling with her. Wow, your career is just taking off. I'm hoping it'll it'll continue on that trajectory. Yes, absolutely. With her help, you know, her she'll give you tips. You'll learn things from her and all the time. She'll learn all from you time. too, you know. It's a two-way street. Exactly. I believe so. Yeah. So, um, you know, this is the first time we've gone through a pandemic. I'm 69 years old and it, uh, raising children and going through pandemics never came with a manual. 69, this is your first pandemic? Yeah, can you figure? <laughs> you haven't lived, Linda. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know how to get through it, but you're a comedian. So why don't you tell me and the listeners some funny ways to cope during these challenging times that we're all in this together crap. <laughs> I, smoke, I smoke a lot of weed, so I, I can't recommend that for everybody. Though I would. Uh, I, uh, I actually, I'm on a drinking hiatus right now, so I can't even say that, but at the beginning, margaritas and 
and Kush was my uh, that was my ideal go to. No, but um, I'm I'm watching TV that I haven't watched in a while. Just some things I wanted to get around to. Seinfeld. I've been watching a shit ton of Seinfeld. Uh, but honestly, writing. That's I, I I get together me and uh me and my boy. We write a couple times a week. We'll throw ideas out. We were whether it's things we want to write as far as screenplay or pilots, or if we're just, you know, like, hey, I had this idea as a joke. What do you think? Like, oh, that's dope, man. So just doing that for the most part, that's, I haven't stopped comedy in any shape or form since this started. I feel like I've been working harder since it started. Uh, I feel like this pandemic is going to weed a lot of comics out. Uh, I'm not going to say unfortunately, because, you know, whatever. Uh, but uh, I think I and, uh, you know, some of the people I've been working with during this time have taken full advantage and like really, really put in a lot of work that I won't say that nobody has, but I feel like I don't think there's many people who are as young in the game as us are doing at this level. And they're going to have no way to know. I could just be being an arrogant little fuck right now. I don't know. Um, <laughs> But I feel good about the work we've been doing. I feel like it's paid off tremendously as in, you know, the couple of uh, couple of shows I've done since the pandemic started, they pretty much went awesome, except the one time I saw you at Backstop. That was a terrible show. Uh, <laughs> the Backstop. Well. Oh, my um, gosh. <laughs> I love Backstop. Backstop is always great. That night just just didn't happen for me. Uh, but, you know, wife, what do you do? Um, <laughs> Again, I, I'd like to bomb every once in a while just because it keeps me humble. So yeah, I still love you. I mean, it might not have been your best set, but I could tell that there's a lot more that didn't come out. You know, it's, some people if they bomb, you're like, well, that's as good as they can be. But that yeah. wasn't the feeling at all. I knew that that was just the crowd or you or whatever. But yeah, it was. It was definitely me. I. I'm one of those people when I can see the crowd, sometimes I, I just felt the crowd wasn't into it. I could tell that. And usually I'm drinking, so I could just be like, fuck it and just dive into that. But I wasn't drinking. And I think I just, I, it was probably like my first or second time on stage with no alcohol. Uh -huh. uh, so I just, I think I got into my head and I literally just started trying to remember the jokes because it was mostly new material. So instead of being funny, I just tried to recite the jokes uh which you know if you're not funny what don't get on stage so i forgot to be funny that night that can happen yes were you there the next week when i got up on stage i thought we were there the same night was it the same night that's what we met that's how this is happening right now isn't it well i went there two weeks in a row and i thought i met oh. you the first night and then i thought i went up after the next week okay no no okay i wasn't there the next week then because that girl um, with the short shorts named Daisy that prances around <laughs> with her legs hanging out. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so uh, when I went up there, I, I called her out on the carpet and said, Daisy with the Daisy Dukes, you know, <laughs> started ra ragging on her. <laughs> and uh -huh. and uh, she wasn't paying attention. And so then I had to call her out for that. <laughs> and she said, if you'd say something funny, I'd listen. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, God, she's heckling me now. Yeah. I guess I deserve it. And then when I got done, she got up and gave me a hug because I won her over by the end. There you go, see? I mean, that. what's a better feeling than that? When you think you're doing shitty and you win somebody over, that's it's the little thing sometimes. Exactly. Sometimes you do it for yourself. I remember I was at, I was at, I can't remember which show it was at, but, uh, I remember I, I came in with a joke. I just came in hot with a joke, and the crowd, half of them loved it. I think half of them I got lost, half of them. And, uh, but I knew kind of going in, it was an older black audience, I think. And uh, so I kind of knew going in, my material is going to ruffle some feathers just based off of what I'm saying. And when I let the first joke fly, I could see, oh, it's doing what I thought. But from that point on, I was like, okay, I'm into it. Let's go all the way in. And, uh, it wasn't like the best applause I've ever gotten. It was still a pretty good, pretty good show, pretty good uh, performance. But uh, after the show, uh, you know, 
it's sometimes you don't think you have the best performance, but then you'll just have like 20 people coming up next to you. It's like, dude, that was fucking awesome. That was fucking awesome. So it's the things like that is like, that's, that's my audience. That's who I wanted to get those people. So, yes, you know, it's uh, sometimes your victory can come from a standing ovation. Sometimes your victory can come from making a crowd walk, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's, who knows? We're crazy people for doing this shit anyway, so. I did comedy at a battered women's shelter and I got four women crying. <laughs> Is that what? Crying bad crying. What? Good crying or bad crying? Three out of the four, it was good crying, but one girl was crying because what I was, I was talking about how I was in the military and certain things happened to me and how I'd come through it and I'm able to laugh now, but she wasn't able to laugh about, you know, sexual traumas and PTSD mm -hmm. and oops, didn't, didn't think about that. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's kind of like the occupational hazard of what we do. Everybody goes through some shit. I got, again, you know, I got jokes about serious material or serious topics, uh, but I always try to joke about it <laughs> either yes. way, but uh, I don't, yeah, I mean, oh, that's, that's a difficult one. That's a difficult one, but. This is how we get through it. We find, thanks to Shakespeare, we finally get to where we can laugh about it, but, you that's know. That's the genius in what we do. If I can, if I can make you laugh about abortion after you've had an abortion, well, then I'm a good fucking comic. Thank you. Yeah. I have an abortion joke that I just love, but I'm always going, I don't know if this crowd is, would let would let me get away with this one. <laughs> but I want to I want, I want to let it rip every time because <laughs> I like the joke, but I'm kind of concerned. <laughs> hey, well, I mean, if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, well, then you got to let it go like a real abortion. So. <laughs> Like, if it doesn't work, I go, oh, would you rather hear that I had the abortion because of a rape? Because <laughs> I can I can fake it. I'm a boomer. I can fake anything. <laughs> like, we can go on this all night. I don't care. How long do you want this to last? <laughs> yeah. See, a lot of people would just, that would be shocking to some people. But that's truth to me. That's so much truth in that. Yes. Yes. We all do things that later on in life, we were like, oh, I don't know that I would still do that. But, you know, we're young and stupid or whatever. I did right. shit last week. I probably wouldn't do. <laughs> so um, the, let's say here's my last little I want to drive you nuts question. Mm -hmm. So let's say that today they found a cure. We're safe everywhere in the world. And you got a stimulus bonus of a million dollars. And you can do bless anybody you want or bless yourself or go anywhere, do anything. Where would you go first? What's the first thing you're gonna do with that? Um, I, you know, I would have to take a vacation, uh, and it'd be weirdly enough, I would still want to go to a beach where nobody else is. Uh, <laughs> I'd still want to be away from everybody else, most likely. Uh, but after that, I'd come back and I would produce one of these million-dollar ideas on the whiteboard. That's what I would do with my money. I would invest in myself. Lovely. Well, I want you to know that you're now a graduate of the comic spot <laughs> and that's worth a million. So now for the rest of your life and mine, especially mine, <laughs> come back every month and plug something. So I don't know how many things are on that board behind you, but when those get rocking and rolling, or if you want to come back on just to talk about an upcoming podcast or absolutely or bring your co-host with you or other get just whatever you want to plug you have my permission to come on every month i'm down for it thank you so much if i got some product to push i'll hit you up thank you so much you guys byron austin i'm going to type up all his links you're going to know how to follow him support good people quit supporting those a-holes out there this is a nice guy. You see how nice he is? <laughs> okay, well, he doesn't, he's like Mesa Mesa. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, I'm, a, I'm a nice person for the most part. I just don't give a shit. <laughs> We're all pretty nice to a certain point, you know? Exactly. You don't want to catch me on a day when you trigger me. <laughs> I'm a passive, so I'm always moody, so. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm moody too, I'm telling you. So I just want to thank you for coming on. The post will be up with if any typos or errors, let me know. I got no ego in this game, obviously. Where are you at right now? What? Where are you right now? I'm at the Stratosphere in the Starbucks coffee shop because it's free oh, Wi-Fi. Gotcha. The Stratosphere. No. Yeah, Are I don't live gambling. To, uh, no, I can't do it anymore. I, I blow so much money gambling. I have to put a limit on myself. Yeah, it's a good idea. There you go. Yeah, yeah, I have to watch that. So, I guess I'll head on out, and I want you back. I want you back, 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 back every month. Thank you much. I'll, hey, you send me, you send me the invite. I'll accept. Okay, perfect. I'll do that every month. Wonderful. I look okay. forward to it. Love you lots. Bye bye, Ron Austin. Bye. Everybody's talking.